Hey friends, my name is Yi and welcome back to a new video for IGCC Geography and today we have a new video for theme 3 which is 3.6 for water and here are the specifications from the website and in this video we have one case study which is a water supply in a country or an area so we'll first look at water supply so the key term or the definition for water supply is the volume of clean or potable water available for a community or region and aquifers are rocks that allow water to move through it, such as a layer of a sandstone. And the aquifers must occur above a layer of rock that prevents the water seep from seeping away, which are basically rocks that are non-permeable. So let me just write it down. Non-permeable, which basically means uh, not allowing water to pass through. And here are some notes. And there are different ways that water can be supplied, for example, via dams and reservoirs, like right here, we have a dam right here and reservoir. There could be wells and boreholes where they tap into aquifers to, to obtain water, and the aquifers are right here, as I mentioned. And there's also desalination plants where it's basically turning, turning seawater into drinkable water, and they remove salt and impurities from those seawater. And then also from lakes and rivers, where they are a good source of water, but they are at risk of pollution and eutrophication. Where eutrophication means there's algae or any other bacteria forming on the top of the lakes and rivers, or water. And then there's also rainwater harvesting, where it's collecting rainwater for different uses. For example, for farming, for washing stuff. Then there is cloud seeding, which is a method used to increase rainfall artificially, in an uh, in an area, and it's often used in an area of drought or an over or like over an agricultural area, as it promotes rainfall in that certain region. So this diagram over here, on the sorry, on the left, not on the right, shows how so shows how cloud seeding works. So number one, so silver iodide is sprayed across a propane flame by a plane, like uh, like so this plane right here, and then number two. The silver iodide particles rise and reach the clouds. So they rise up and then they, they reach the clouds. So they reach the clouds and they cause the cloud moisture to freeze and this forms ice crystals for number three. And number four, the ice crystals that are frozen become large enough to fall as snow. And as it reaches a place where it's not that, not that cold, it'll just become rain. So that's how a cloud seeding works. Then there is water usage. So here are some notes. Different parts of the world use water differently and there's different water mix or like the percentage being used in certain industry and certain other domestic use. So in developing countries, around 80% of the water is used in agriculture, whereas 10% of water is used domestically and 10% is used in different industry. And we can compare this developing country with developed countries where in developed countries, around 40% of water is used in agriculture, whereas 15% of water is used domestically, and 45% of water is used in different industries, for example, in manufacturing industry or in a factory. And the difference between these two water usage in developing and in developed countries boils down to industrialization and the growth of various industries. So for example, in a developing industry, uh, sorry, in developing countries, the countries industrialize and become more developed, so they shift away from farming, which are primary, which is the primary sector, to more high-tech industries, which are secondary and tertiary sectors. So as we see from, uh, as a country industrializes from developing to developed countries, because people move away from farming, that's why the usage for water in agriculture in agriculture decreases, as shown here. And there could also be variation in water allocation within the country. For example, in the USA, over 80% of water demand in the West is for irrigation or for agriculture, whereas only in the, whereas in the East is only 6% to, due to the geography and the amount of land available in the buildings over there. And then there's water surplus, water deficit, and water scarcity. So starting with surplus and deficit, it's quite important to understand the differences between water surplus and water deficit. So water surplus is when there's an excess of water available to the system, where the supply of the water is greater than the demand of the water. 
Whereas water deficit is the opposite, where there is limited water supply available in the, uh, to the system, where the demand for water is greater than the supply of water. Then we have water scarcity. So we have two terms here which are quite similar, which are water stress and water scarcity. And water stress is when the water supply in the country is below 1,700 meters cubed per person per year, whereas water scarcity is the water supply in the country is below 1,000 meters cubed per person per year. So water scarcity is more serious. And then there are physical reasons and economic reasons as to why water scarcity happens. Where physical reasons include when water is not available due to physical factors, which occur in dry or arid areas. Whereas economic factors include uh, occurring in early DCs or less economically developed countries when there's an inadequate infrastructure in place to store water. So that's uh, when, where there is. So now we'll look at a case study, which is the water supply in the country or area, which will look at USA, the Colorado River. So here's some background information. The Colorado River is located in the southwestern US and is around 2,300 kilometers long. And the source of the river is in the Rocky Mountains near the, uh, the Rocky Mountain National Park, around 3,000 meters above sea level, the elevation. And the mouth of the river is in the Gulf of California. So here are some statistics to back up the information. Across the whole river, some areas receive around 1,000 mm of rainfall annually, whereas some areas are dry, which receives less than 15 mm of rainfall annually, for example in the Mojave Desert. And 12.7 million people live on the Colorado River Basin, and more than 40 million people rely on the river for their needs, for example for washing or for food and water. And California has benefited the most from its rivers, as more than 80% of the Colorado's river is used for agriculture and irrigation in California. And there are 3.5 million hectares of irrigated land in California. And the water, as mentioned, is obtained from the Colorado River. And then we have water supply and the management strategies in the Colorado River. So starting with water supply, the Colorado River provides water to seven states in the western USA that are part of the Colorado River Basin. And there are 15 dams on the Colorado River, and the Hoover Dam has created the largest artificial lake in uh, this lake right here. And on average, around 1.5 km3 of water is pumped per year. However, people are taking too much water out of the river, which might, which might cause um, the river water from decreasing, which will sap the river supply, as they call it. And then we have the management strategies. So the Colorado River Aqueduct, or the CRA, is a 389 kilometers of tunnel taking water from the Parker Dam to LA. And the Central Arizona Project, or the CAP, was a $4 billion project completed in 1992 that, is, that contains a diversion channel, or diversion canal. And it has been providing water for irrigation to farms, to Native Americans, and to fast-growing towns and cities. And due to the limited supply of water, farmers have switched from high dependent crops, for example rice and alfalfa because those require lots of water to grow them, to those that need less water to grow. And that's it for this video. And that's it for this video for 3.6 for water, and I hope you will enjoy this video. If you need more learning resources, you can check out my website in the description, or you can check it out in your browser at www.umitsueasy.com. And I hope you all enjoyed this video, and I'll see you all in the next video for a new video for IGCC Geography. Here's to learning made easy.